Hi everybody and welcome back to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District. And we are located in South St. Louis County. I'm so excited that you're here today. We're gonna to be doing a math lesson that's geared towards students in grades pre-K through second, but all learners are welcome to join us. So before we get started with our lesson, we're gonna do a little warm up to get our brains ready to think about math. Our warm up today is going to be a game called Guess My Number. Now this is a game that you could play at home because you really don't need any tools. All you're gonna need is a partner to help play this game with, or you can even do it with a group of people. So to help us with our game and to learn about what this game's about, I have listed up here all of the numbers between one and 20. So I'm gonna move you a little closer so you can see with me. Here are all my numbers. Now. I'm thinking of a secret number between one and 20, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to figure out what number I'm thinking about based on questions that you ask me. So you can ask a variety of questions when you're playing this game. One of those questions could be, is your number odd or even? Great question. The number, the secret number that I have today is an even number. So what I can do to show you is I can take away all of the odd numbers. Now remember, odd numbers are numbers that have a one, three, five, seven, or nine in the ones digit place. So I'm gonna take away one, three, five, seven, and nine. And then I'm gonna come down to my second row and I'm gonna take away 11, 13, 15, 17, and 19. So now I'm left with about half as many numbers. So what other kinds of questions could you ask about the number? Hmm. You know, maybe I'm gonna ask, does your number have one or two digits? Some of these numbers have one, some of these numbers have two. So that might help me eliminate some choices. Well, the number I have today, it only has one digit. So I can take away the digits or the numbers that have two digits. One, take away that one. These have two. Oh. Now, there's only a few choices left. Hmm, which one do you think is my secret number? I don't know. Well, what's another question that you could ask to help me figure out what number I'm choosing? Hmm. You know, we could ask a more than or less than question. When we're talking about more than or less than, we're gonna look at one number and see if it's more than that number or less than that number. So I could say is the secret number more than five. Well, the secret number is not more than five. It's not, it's not bigger than five. So I can take away these numbers that are bigger than five. And now I am left with two choices. So I'm gonna give you five seconds. Which one do you think my answer is? Is it a two or a four? Which one's the secret number? Ready? The secret number was, drum roll please, two. If you guessed two, congratulations. If not, that's okay. This was a guessing game. So this is definitely a game that you could play at home. You don't need any materials, but you could create cards to help you. You could do numbers from one to zero, or if you wanted to make it really hard for yourself, you could do all the way from one to 100. That would make it way more challenging. So now that our math brains are up and ready to go, let's get into that lesson. All right. In today's lesson, we're going to be working with one of our mathematical practices. Today, we're sticking with mathematical practice number seven, and that is looking for and making use of structure. Now, today we're going to be focusing on this I can statement. I can demonstrate fluency in addition and subtraction problems. 
We're going to be focusing today on how addition and subtraction problems are related and how they fit together. Now, if you were here with us earlier this week, we played a little game called Bears in the Cave. And if you weren't with us, that's okay, because we're going to review it right now. So to play this game, you're going to need some blocks. So let's say I have five blocks or bears. These are my bears. This is my cave. Now, some of my bears are going to hide in my cave. Now, because they're in a cave, I can't see them, but I know that they're there. What I can see is the bears that are outside of my cave. I have two bears outside of my cave. And I need to figure out how many bears are inside my cave. Now, what we talked about was we can use a number bond to help us figure out a problem. And a number bond looks like this. We're bonding two numbers together for the whole. We could also call this a part, part, whole model. Here's one part, part number one. Here's part number two. And here's my whole. So, when we look at our bears in a cave example, we know our whole. We know how many bears there are all together. We have five. Now, there are two parts. There are the bears in the cave, and there are the bears outside of the cave. So, we don't know how many bears are in our cave, but we do know how many bears are outside of our cave, and that's two. One thing we talked about when we had our lesson was that you can create an addition problem from this number bond. So, can you create an addition problem if you're missing a number? Huh. Let's look at what an addition problem looks like. We have one number plus another number equals our answer. Now, each of these numbers are called add-ins. And an add-in is the number that is being added together. And when you add two add-ins together, you come up with a sum. And that's the answer to an addition problem, a sum. So, if I look here at my number bond, these parts are related. Both of my parts are actually add-ins. They're the numbers I'm adding together. So this is an add-ins and this is an add-ins. This number here, my whole, is my sum. So when I add these two numbers together, I'm going to get my whole or my sum. So if I wanted to try and plug these numbers in, I could say that I know that I have one of my add-ins is a 2. I don't know my other add-ins, but I know that my sum is going to be 5. So right now, we're left with this problem that 2 plus some number equals 5. Now, how do we try and solve that problem? Huh, that's tricky. You know, one thing that we could do is we could use subtraction to help us solve this problem. So, I'm going to erase this so we have a little bit more room to work, but I want you to keep in mind, our problem was 2 plus something equals 5. All right, what was that problem again? Good. It was 2 plus some number equals 5. Now, I know that I have 2 left out and something in here to get 5. One way we could think about this is with subtraction. When we're talking about subtraction, we are starting with our whole. We're starting with our whole, which I'm going to represent by a W, and we're taking pieces away. All right? We're taking things away. We're taking away parts. So if I look at my example up here, what is my whole? How many bears are there? There's five bears. Now, how many bears do I know there are in one of the parts? That's right, I know 
that there are two bears. So I can take those two bears away. If I had all five bears, right? I have a stick of five and I took away two because I know where these two are. I'm gonna be left with the rest of the bears. How many are missing or in the cave? So I have one, two, three bears left. So five minus two equals three. Now to check my answer, I can go up here and I can check to see if my answer is correct. I can plug that number in. I can take this three and plug it in right here and see, does two plus three equals five? So let's try it. I have three and I have two. Two plus three, stick it together. Let's see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five. So two plus three does equal five. So we're able to take a subtraction problem and help it and use it to help us find the addition problem when there's a missing piece. Let's try another one of these. All right, let's go back to our bears in the cave. This time I have 10 bears, 10 in all, all right? And some of them are in the cave and some of them are not. So some are here, some are not. When I look at my addition sentence that I want to write, I have a part plus a part equals a whole. Added plus an added equals the sum. All right, now my sum is my whole. We know that already. We know how many bears we had to start with. We had 10 bears to start with. Now, let's look at our parts. We have bears in the cave and we have bears outside of the cave. Do we know how many bears are in the cave? No, but do we know how many bears are outside the cave? We do. We have one, two, three, four bears outside of the cave. So we have, we don't know inside the cave. We can put a box there, plus four bears outside the cave. Now, in order to figure out the answer to my addition sentence, I'm going to use subtraction to help me. So I'm going to start with my whole amount, with my sum. I'm gonna start with 10. Now, from my 10, I'm gonna take away what I know. There's something that I know. I already know one of those parts. And what the part I know is, is how many bears are outside of the cave. I know that there are four bears outside, so I'm gonna take those away. So if I have 10 and I take away four, one, two, three, four, how many are left? Very good, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 10 minus four equals six. So what I can do now is I can plug this six into this box and see if six plus four equals 10. So let's try that. I'm gonna make a group of six right here, and I'm going to make a group of four. And I'm going to put those together. And let's count to see how many we have all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So six plus four does equal ten. Now, if you look at this addition sentence and this subtraction sentence, do you notice anything about them? What do you notice about the numbers? Yeah, 
you know, one thing I'm noticing is they use all the same numbers. Why do you think that might be? Huh. You know what? I think I know. Can I let you in on a little secret? Did you know that math facts have families? That's right. Addition and subtraction facts are related. They're in the same family. Every addition and subtraction problem has a family of its own. That family uses the same numbers. So let's see if we can figure out what one of our fact families looks like. We were just working with the equation six plus four equals 10. And this fact family we're gonna find comes and lives in a house. And that house has a triangle roof and it has four rooms in the house. Now, fact families have four different addition and subtraction problems that go with them. Two addition problems and two subtraction problems. So let's add those symbols here. Addition and subtraction. Now, in the roof, I'm gonna put the numbers that we're working with today. Six, four, and 10. Six and four are my add-ins. So they go at the base of my roof to hold it up. Six and four. My 10, my sum, is gonna go up at the top of my roof. All right, now the numbers that are in my roof are the only numbers that I'm allowed to use in my fact family addition subtraction problems. I can't use any other number because they're not a part of this fact family. So looking here, I already have one of my addition sentences, six plus four. So what's my other addition sentence? Huh. You know, I remember we talked about addition earlier this week. Do you remember what we talked about? Oh, you're right. We talked about the commutative property. The commutative property says that it doesn't matter what order you add your numbers in, you always get the same answer. It's also called flip-flop facts or turnaround facts. So if I take my six plus four and I flip-flop it or I turn it around, I come up with four plus six. So now I have my two addition sentences, six plus four and four plus six. Now, if I look at that with a model, I have six plus four. Added together, that equals 10. But if I flip it, I have four plus six. And added together, that still equals 10. I didn't take any away. So, so far, my house is looking pretty good. But now we come to subtraction. What are my subtraction problems gonna be? You know, one thing I do know about subtraction is we always start with our biggest number because you can't take away from something you don't have. So I know that 10 is gonna come first. All right. So let's look at this. I have two parts. I have my six and I have my four and all together it makes 10. What do I get if I take four away from 10? I get six, very good. So 10 minus four fits. Well, I took away four, well, can I take away six? What happens when I do 10 minus six? What do I get? Very good, I get four. So these are the four equations that belong in this fact family. Six plus four, four plus six, 10 minus four. Oh, I wrote the wrong one. Silly me. And 10 minus six. Those are the four equations that belong with this family. Let's try this again. 
We're going to use a different fact family, and you're going to help me come up with the matching addition and subtraction sentences. All right. Here is our house. And it has four rooms. Now, here are our numbers. You ready? All right. We have 11, 5, and 16. Now remember, we have to write two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences. Huh. Well, I know that the numbers at the base of my roof, my 11 and my five, those are add-ins. So I have to use them to add to get my sum. So let's write our first one, 11 and five. 11 plus five. All right. Well, what about my turnaround fact? All right, let's do that. Five plus 11. All right, both of those equal 16, right? I could add that up here. And leave lots of room, but that's okay. What about my subtraction problem? Well, I know I have to start with my biggest number, right? 16. Well, let's take, let's do 16 and let's take away five. What does that equal? Well, I don't know. I think I'm gonna need some help for that. All right. Let me put my blocks together. All right, here, we have one long stick of 16, and I need to take away five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, how much is left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Well, I know that I can only use the same numbers, so I got 11, that works out perfectly. All right, let's try the opposite way. Let's do 16 and let's take away 11. That's a big one. I'm definitely gonna need a model for this. All right, I got my blocks. I have 16 and let's take away 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoops, 10, 11. All right, well, how much is left? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect, it's the same numbers. I found my fat family. Awesome. All right, well, I think we have time for one more. Now, sometimes when we see fat families, they look a little different. They live in a tent. And sometimes that tent can look just like this. And so for my tent, I have my two add-ins and my sum at the top. So let's look at one of ours. Let's say our sum is 20 and our two add-ins are going to be 12 and eight. All right, here's what that looks like. Inside, I can write my two addition sentences and my two subtraction sentences. Those are all the people who live inside my tent. Now remember, my eight and my 12 are my add-ins, so I can put them up here on my first addition sentence. Eight and 12. Now, my add-ins added together equals my sum. So eight plus 12 equals 20. Now, to find my other addition sentence, I can do my flip-flop fact. 
So I can take my 8 and 12 and I can flip flop it and I can write 12 plus 8 equals 20, my sum. So now I have my two addition sentences set up. Now let's look at subtraction. We know that when we do subtraction, we start with our biggest number. And in this case, we're going to start with our 20, our sum. So now I'm going to take away one part. I'm going to do my 20 and I'm going to take away 12. And when I take away one part, I end up with the other part what's what, with what's left over. So 20 minus 12 equals 8. And if I do the other part, so I took 12 away, if I do 20 minus 8, I end up with the remaining part, 12. So 20 minus 8 is 12. So looking here, that's a fact family. So our addition and our subtraction facts are related. So if I look back at my goal for today, that I can demonstrate fluency in addition and subtraction problems. Knowing all about my fact families is really going to help me be fluent. Because if I know what 8 plus 12 is, I can figure out what 20 minus 12 is because they're all related. So that's really gonna help me with my fluency. I hope that you learned a lot in our math lesson today, and I hope that you practice some of this at home. But even while you're practicing, I hope that you're having fun, working hard, and we'll see you again next time. Bye guys. Bye.